I am doing my favorites for June and a couple fails. I am putting them together. Um, I usually put them in my empties, but they're not technically empty and I probably will finish using them. And I apologize if you do hear my little cooling system. It's just one of those little as seen on TV Arctic airs, but unfortunately where I film at it is way too hot. There is no way I'm going to make it through without some type of air. So I'm going to try to go like in groupings so that, you know, like products are together and then we'll go from there. So I am going to knock out my few fails right off the bat. I'm going to say that this is due to skin texture, skin tone, skin type, preference, things like that. I actually know for a fact from others that these are great products. I, however, am not having success for them. So the first one, and I have to say, I waited a really long time to try this because I was watching reviews and everything else, but watching things, I really thought this was going to be like my ride or die foundation. I thought it was going to work perfect. Um, I did have quite a difficult time, and I do with this brand on foundations. I have a very difficult time finding the correct one. It will say it's cool, but it will turn orange on me, which is typically a warm thing. And I am cool to neutral depending on the brand. I am actually cool undertone, but some brands, their neutral is actually their cool, so that's how that happens. Um, this is the Too Faced Do You Full Coverage Foundation. I am in the color Snow. Snow works pretty well for me. Um, it does push me out a little bit, but as long as I use bronzer, I'm usually okay. Um, I have another one. It's pearl, I believe, not of this, of the Born This Way. And that one looks good, but I can't use a lot of bronzer or it either becomes too dark or it becomes too orange. So let's talk about why this one is a fail for me. So this is, if you can't tell by Do You, and it is D-E-W. Um, this says it's a fresh glow foundation. I'm using a juicy watermelon and fresh cucumber. And it does smell good. I don't like either one of those things. I hate cucumbers and I hate watermelon. And it smells really good. This is long wearing, dewy finish, hydrating and brightening. Now I will definitely say it's hydrating and brightening. It's almost on the verge of a cream. It's so hydrating, which I have dry skin. So again, seems like a perfect world. This comes off my face so fast. And Part of it, I am not getting rid of this because I'm going to try to get in winter. So part of it, I'm sure, plays a role with summer. But I don't even get to finish my makeup before this starts coming off. If you set it, it looks awkward. If you don't set it, it wipes off your face. So it's just a weird thing. And I have the Peach Perfect and I have the Born This Way, so it's not like it's a brand thing. I have tried multiple products. It's just not working. So I'm going to try it again in winter. But that is my fail or one of my fails. Um... The other one is, and I feel like I'm missing one. Let me just make sure. Oh, there it is. I forgot I had made a fail pile. And then lost it promptly. So another fail that I have is actually from Milk Makeup. I got this in my, um, what is it called? That's the one. So I received the powder and the, um, cream and I actually prefer cream I don't know if you can see this when you do it like this it feels almost slimy like it feels like it would glide right over the skin so I've used this three times now one time was in combination with this rubbed my foundation right off so then I thought you know it's probably the um, foundation again because I was having a problem with the foundation so then I tried it with my favorite candid and my Laura Mercier was not able to make it work at all. Now this again, I'm not getting rid of. I'm gonna keep trying it, but right now I would definitely consider it a fail, despite it being one of the most beautiful highlighters. I love the powder one, it looks beautiful. Every time I'm actually wearing it on my inner corner today. So I don't know. I have two loose powders that are fails. These I 100% believe are fails because I have such dry skin. I do not overuse powder. I do set very lightly under my eye. And then once in a while, depending on the heat, I do really lightly buff in a little, and I'm telling you, like, the leftover on the brush. It's such a small one. And unfortunately, the Beauty Bakery Flower and the Cover FX, um, this one's a trial size. This is the Perfect Setting Powder, and this one is in Flower, and it's their setting powder. Both of these are good powders. I do believe it was made for oily skin because the way that it is milled. Like, went for oily skin, typically you see, like, a more um, coarsely grain. And I don't mean it's actually coarse. It's not. It's totally fine. But there's certain ones, like the Fendi, that's super fine. Or the Perfect Powder by um, Peach Perfect by Too Faced. Those are super fine. So these are a little bit bigger. And the minute I use them, and I tried these 
probably longer than June. I mean, I've had both of these, I think, since February or March, and you could see everything. And I mean everything. It was like it was highlighting wrinkles I didn't even know I had. So these are fails for me, but I'm not mad at it. I mean, I kind of knew what they were when I got it, and I should have probably done more research prior to purchasing, so no harm on the brand. So one last fail, and this one I feel really bad even posting because it's one of my literally favorite brands. I love them. However, the whole thing isn't a fail. So I did receive this. It's the City Limits palette. It was in my, um, I think this was in the Tribe box. I'll confirm below or put a note here, but um, I think this was in the Tribe box. So I was super, super stoked to get this. I love IVY. I think that they are an amazing makeup brand. And um, I'm just going to say it. It's, I keep pausing because I just hate even being negative. So I'm not sure if you can tell the actual colors accurately sometimes. Unfortunately, because I had to move my lighting, it's not perfect. I think I do have it fixed now, but we'll see. This blue is an absolute joke. It does not do anything. I mean, it does it, but not correctly. It's got patchiness, which blues are hard. So I didn't judge them when I just had that one because blues are very difficult. And then... This one right here is supposed to be almost like a purpley, sh purpley shimmer shade, and that was unbelievable. What I figured out really quickly is the fallout is what the problem is. So you have fallout in the palette, then you have fallout up here, not just below your eye, but actually on your eye. So if you think you're putting a really small amount, the fallout actually makes it a lot more. I tried this four times, and all four times, I looked like a kid playing in her mother's makeup. And don't get me wrong. I don't do crazy eye looks. I'm not like one of those super awesome people on Instagram or anything else. However, I can't deal with fallout like that. It just, it makes it so much of us. And typically, other than when I'm feeling, filming, I typically have 10, 15, maybe 30 minutes if things are going perfect to do my makeup. I can't deal with cleaning looks up. So I think that is all of my fails. So, so one of the first ones that I'll mention, this is one that I almost bought, I, th I think in November, maybe January, I'm not 100% when, but this is the MAC Light Fall Tinted Cream, and it is an F SPF 30, and this one in particular is extra light, which is me. Um, this works really well. It, it do I do have one caveat to that. It is one of my favorite tinted moisturizers that I've ever used because it is almost like a CC cream, like it smooths and just makes things look good. The only thing I hate about this is when I'm wearing a tinted moisturizer, I do not want to wear any powder. I want it to be summery and moisturized and everything else. This transfers. The very first day I wore it to work, I hung up the phone and there was makeup all over my phone. So what I've been doing is taking my, and I think I have it right here, hourglass incans incandescent strobe. And I've been just lightly putting it in the touch places. I tend to touch my face, which I'm not supposed to do, but I do. So that, I think it works amazing. It's way more nourishing than a lot of tinted moisturizers. I think this and the First Aid Beauty are probably the two that I've loved the most. And I haven't used that one long enough to give you a rating, but this one is great. I do hate the fact I have to fix the transference. So I do forget one fail. This is the Sugar um, Contour de Force Mini Bronzer in Woody Wonder. Now, I will preface to say this is probably a little bit warmer than I prefer my bronzers, but I try to use this multiple times, and it's literally patchy. Like, I tried it with a brush. I tried tapping it out with my finger and then doing it. Like, it just doesn't blend well. And I even did the trick where you put a little bit of loose powder and then blend. It just was not working for me. I have not had good luck with this brand, I'm going to be honest. I'm not going to say that they're stuff is ill-made or not good but I have not had luck with anything I've had from them and it could be again preference skin type or any of those things but it's just really unfortunate that it doesn't work so if we were to look at face products because I don't think I have any primers here oh I well I have one I have one primer one skin product coconut skin smoothing priming moisturizer by um first aid beauty this one is, I actually, I also have been trying their hyaluronic acid one, and I'm really, really loving that one, but I've not been using it long enough to, like, give you, you know, my 100% opinions, but this one is just, like, this one when I'm running late, I will put this on by itself, just as a daily moisturizer, because it feels so good on the skin, 
And I have to say, I don't know if there's a connection between my makeup lasting or not. And again, it could be because I'm in summer, but I definitely love the way it feels. I like the way my makeup goes over it and it smells fantastic too. So that's a primer. The only skincare product I have is by Sephora and it's their super hydrated, um, let's see, all the hydrator, hydrate and glow. So this is like a hyaluronic acid gel, but not like, a. It's not an essence or anything you know, like that. It's like almost like the primer I just showed you. It's similar to that. This is one that when I'm running late and I don't have time, I throw this on. And then when I get to work, I actually keep my Wander Beauty Dive In at work. And these are the two items I combine on my face. So that's my only primers and things. So my foundations that I have actually kind of go together. So the first one I've talked about many times on my channel, but I actually just repurchased it or retraded for it. And so I got two shades. This is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Beauty. So this is in R260 and R230. So I thought when I was looking at it originally that the higher the number, the darker the foundation, which is not necessarily true. I'm actually finding it's not true with a lot. Like Juvia's Place, it's definitely not true. It goes by um, undertone. So the one that's 260 is actually way more cool than the one that's 230. Now, it is ironic to me that both of these shades match me so well only thing that I could say that's a caveat about the R230, that's the this one, it does almost give me the look of like a suntan or it's not dark like that. It's not what I mean. I think because it's a warmer undertone, it has that golden look. So it's almost like a skin tan when I have no tan. Um, so I actually mix these together now and I actually get like the best shade I've ever had in my life of any foundation. And this is literally my favorite formula as well. Okay, so my battery died. I'm actually going to try to move a little bit faster. I think there's something wrong with my battery. It's not charging like it normally does. And normally I charge like before. thought that was already done. So foundations, I actually have both the um, It Cosmetics. This is the Illumination. And this is the just color correcting, anti-aging, hydrating. Actually, they both have SPF of 50. I mix these together because this is a little bit too dewy for me. And these absolutely look fantastic every single time. You can go with or without powder with them as well. Also in the like face category is Becca. I actually want to show these two little things. I actually, both of them are getting really low in it. This is a color correcting cream, but it also moisturizes your under eyes. So it absolutely looks fantastic. Sorry, I'm talking so fast. I want to try to get this video done. Next for powder. I actually have owned this since January, but this is the um, Hourglass Veil. This literally looks great on dry skin. You can use it as little or as, well, not as much, but you can use it everywhere just under your eye and it blends in with creams really well and you know kind of pats them into the the face um this is a the becca and malika face palette this is something i want to talk about for summer looks i have been doing my summer look with this and that's my eyeshadow that's my eyeshadow that's my bronzer blush there's highlights and then a, a different blush this is all i use for my face other than like the cosmetics you know they're the what am I trying to say here? Complexion products. So this is actually awesome. I can throw it in my bag and that's the only thing I put on other than my complexion and a lip gloss. So it looks great. Especially that bronzer shade is so diverse. Um, I want to mention two other hourglass ones. I wanted to mention this is diffused heat, I believe. Yep, diffused heat. This looks so natural in the summer and blends perfectly every single time. And this is the ambient strobe or incandescent strobe light. I think I said that wrong earlier. So this one you can go over and it just puts a nice glow on your face and it looks fantastic. I have some other highlighters. Bear with me. I've been highlighting the crap out of my face this month. This is the Milk Makeup. I had told you I didn't like the cream. I adore this powder. Actually, I'm wearing it on my inner quarter today and I love it. I just think it works really good. And if you look at my Instagram, I have comparison swatches of these guys. I had bought them to wear together and it just shows up with little swatching really well. The other one I have is um, Wet n Wild, which I realize there's controversy there, but I just try to stay out of that. So this is a loose highlighter. It looks like it's rose gold, but when it goes on the skin, this is I'm So Lit. So it looks like it's a rose gold, but it goes on the skin. It's actually so much lighter, and I do use literally from the lid, like the smallest amount. It does have a lot of shimmer or glitters in it, so you will want to make sure you're aware of that before you use it. The last one in that like family is from Girlactic. So this is a cream blush and a highlighter. We did get this in our Ipsy, you know, Boxy Charm a while back. So this is the Skin Glow. I am a Girlactic addict. I really truly love their products and I like them the best when it's a cream product. I have a few powder ones. They work good, not knocking them, 
but this is literally what they are good at. And then I have two mascaras. I have the Iconic Dior Show. I talked about that I love using this to lengthen when I'm wearing falsies, but you can wear it by itself. It is not a thickening formula in my opinion. I think it's more of a lengthening formula. And then the other one is like literally my holy grail. This is the Punk Volumizer by Duche. Duche? Duche? Duche. I think it's Duche. Duche. <laughs> it's like another word, but French, but not French. Um, so this one actually, I'm going to show you the brush. Hopefully my camera doesn't die. This brush is so big, but it's not like got big in different spots. It's big consistently and I love it. Also have a pair of lashes for you. These also we received in BoxyCharm. I actually went on Mercari and purchased a ton of them because I love them and they're really affordable since they were from Boxy. These just look really, really good. I actually trim them so they're more on the outer side and then use my inner lashes to pop on the end and it looks fantastic. I also have a lipstick. This is the Becca. We actually got this in the Boxy Looks. But this is in Sorbet. I'm actually wearing it today. So this is just really creamy and I don't want it up the eye. And goes on right every single time. I'm not a bullet lipstick fan. I am a liquid lipstick girl. Although, I've been coming to the dark side on lip gloss. The last product I have is, this is from Revlon Color Save. These are the cream eyeshadows. This is 705. I don't think it gives me a color. No, it just has a number. So this is um, very similar to the... Um, Tarte makes them, Hourglass makes them. This is not a shimmery shade, so it does, well, it is kind of a shimmer, but it's like a pearl color. These go on and they stay all day. And if you wear them with other colors, it does help the other colors stay. This is from Morphe. This is the 462. This is like the blender micro or uh, dual fiber brush. I've had this in my collection, I think, a year. Never used it more than once or twice. I've been using it recently to kind of blend out. I put a loose touch of powder on it, I blend out my foundation that foundation. It's not anywhere else trying to go to. My bronzer, my blush, and my highlight to kind of get it to, to not be so line, line, line. And it truly diffuses it. It just makes it look very pretty, very beautiful. I actually had planned to do my empties with my favorites, and then I realized that my favorites had kind of got out of control once you counted in the fails this month. So I'm actually going to do that separately. I think I'm going to combine it. I've been wanting to do a video on Scentford and the changes that they've been going through. So I think probably what I'm going to do is actually do a video with Scentford and a video with my empties together. I also have my can challenge and my no buy coming up. I actually, that's kind of a big thing that I need to talk about. So I hope that you've made it this far. If you have, I hope that you will subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We do upload every Thursday and Sunday and I appreciate you watching and if this is the first time here I welcome you we do pan challenges and unboxings I do actually a ton of unboxings no buy low buy new product talk favorites and fails empties things like that and if you like that I'm sure you'd love to stick around and become part of the family and then if you are a repeat watcher thank you so much for watching I do appreciate it and, and whether you're a new watcher or a returning watcher if you wouldn't mind clicking the like button I am trying to educate people about how important likes are they're actually just as, or maybe even more important than the subscribe button because it does put us out into the YouTube universe and let other people see us. I hope you have a great day.